This is David Williams from the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College and in this video I want to show you how to do the AC analysis of a common emitter circuit and ultimately I'm going to show you what happens when you apply this signal this 10 millivolt signal from the source that has a 600 ohm output impedance to the BJT this, this common emitter circuit what kind of output do we get? First of all, this is a, called a common emitter amplifier because we apply the input at the base and we take the output at the collector and the input and, and the output both have the emitter in common with each other. Now, let's take a look at the analysis of the circuit. So I've, I've recopied the circuit down here so I've got a little bit more white space to, to work in. And the next thing I'm going to do is the DC analysis. And the DC analysis is going to involve a few steps. The first step is I'm going to eliminate all of my AC sources. And in this case, I only have the one. So what happens to eliminate the AC sources? Well, I short the AC sources. So that AC source is now short. The next thing I'm going to do is replace all the caps with opens. So all of these capacitors get opened up and basically disconnect the source, disconnect the load, and disconnect this bypassing resistor around the emitter resistor, or bypassing capacitor around the emitter resistor. And when I do that, I end up with this voltage divider bias circuit. Now that I've got just the DC circuit, I can do the DC analysis, on, DC analysis on the circuit, and that's going to involve finding the operating point. So I want to find, I want to find what my collector current is, and I want to find what my collector emitter voltage is. Now I didn't write, I didn't declare what this beta was, but let's say we found this transistor has a beta of 150. So with a voltage divider by a circuit, if R2 is less than 0.1 times beta times RE, then I can make the approximation that there's no base current going into the transistor, and then this is truly a voltage divider bias. So if we see 0.1 times beta, so that's going to be 15, times 3,000 is, is 45,000. 45,000 is greater than R2, so R2 is less than, less than, than this number here. So I can make that assumption. So this makes my, my calculations much easier. So very quickly, do the DC analysis. The voltage at the base was, is going to be 24 volts times 30 over 30 plus 130. And that works out to 4.5 volts. The voltage at the emitter will be 0.7 volts. Voltage at the emitter here is going to be 0.7 volts less than the voltage at the base there. So that will be 3.8 volts. The emitter current is going to be the 3.8 volts over the 3,000 ohms of the emitter resistor. So we're figuring out this current. Works out to 1.26 milliamps. Because we're making this, uh, we're using this approximation method, this approximate method, collector current and emitter current are about the same. So we've got 1.26 milliamps for the, for the collector current. And using that collector current of 1.26 milliamps, we can figure out the collector emitter voltage. It's going to be 24 volts minus 1.26 milliamps times... 8 kilo ohms plus 3 kilo ohms, which works out to 10.06 volts. So there's my operating point, 1.26 milliamps for the collector current and 10.06 volts for the collector emitter voltage. Now I did this DC analysis very quickly, but if you want to see more details on how to do that, you can see one of my videos that I have on the DC analysis of BJT circuits. Now we can move into the AC analysis. And the AC analysis is going to be simply looking at just at the AC portion of the circuit and determining the voltage gain as well as the input impedance and the output impedance. So in the AC analysis, the first thing we want to do is short any DC voltage sources. So get rid of the DC part of the circuit. So that's going to involve shorting VCC there. So that's going to connect this point to ground. 
I'm also going to short all the capacitors. I'm just here I'm making the assumption that my frequency is high enough and my capacitors are big enough that those capacitors are going to basically be, sh be shorts. Then I'm going to simplify the circuit and this is going to involve combining resistors if I want to do that and it's also going to involve replacing the transistor here with an AC model of, of the transistor that's going to allow us to do the, the AC analysis. And in this case, I'm going to replace that transistor with the T equivalent model. And the T equivalent model looks like this. Here's the base, here's the emitter, and connected in the, emit in the emitter is this little RE resistance. And then over here is the collector with this current source. And that current source in the collector will create a current that's equal to beta times IB. So I'm going to redraw the circuit over here. Here's my AC source, my 600 ohm output impedance of my AC source connected into the transistor circuit now. So I sort of break this transistor circuit up into into um, three parts. I've got the input part which I've just drawn over here. I've got the amplifier part which is is the part in the middle and then I've got my output part here. So the next thing I'm going to draw here is the amplifier part. So this point there corresponds to here. And so we can see that I've got a 30 kilo ohm resistor to ground as well as a 130 kilo ohm resistor to ground. And then this point goes into the base. So here's where I'm going to take my T equivalent equivalent model and plug it in. So I've got my base here, and then I've got the emitter at this point with my little RE value, and I've got in my collector, I've got my beta IB current. Now let's look what's going on, what I need to draw here in the in, in connected here to the emitter. Well, we see that this capacitor is effectively a short of AC. And so my 3 kilo ohm resistor is actually getting bypassed. And what I end up with is my emitter, as far as AC is current concerned, being connected directly to ground. Now if we go over here and look at the collector, I've got two things connected over here at the collector. I've got this 8 kilo ohm resistor to ground, as well as the 12 kilo ohm re load resistor to ground. So I've got 8 kilo ohm collector resistor and the 12 kilo ohm load resistor. And across the load resistor right here, that's my output. And there's one more piece of information for this puzzle, and that's the value for that little RE. Little RE is always going to be 26 millivolts divided by the emitter resistor, not the emitter resistor, it's going, little re is going to be the 26 millivolts divided by the collector current, the DC collector current, which was 1.26 milliamps. So the little re value works out to 20.36 ohms. So I've redrawn the circuit down here again to give me a little bit more room, and there's actually one more adjustment I'm going to make. You can see that the 30 kilo ohm resistor and the 130 kilo ohm resistor are in parallel with each other. So I'm going to replace them with a resistor that's the equivalent of a 30 kilo ohm in parallel to one kilo, uh, 30 kilo ohm in parallel to 130 kilo ohms. So that equivalent resistance is 24.4 kilo ohms. Now let's do the AC analysis on this circuit now. We've, we've reduced the circuit to its AC equivalent model or schematic. Let's do the AC analysis on it. A couple things to note before we go, go on. 
is that the voltage across those two points is my input voltage and the voltage across these two points is my output voltage. Now the definition for the voltage gain of an amplifier is V out over V in. So I've redrawn the AC model of the circuit here and I've spread it out a little bit to give me some more room to show you what's going on in the circuit. First thing I want to break down is this distinguishing is to distinguish between the input which is over here. Here's my input signal that consists of the signal source plus the output impedance of that signal source and the amplifier which is this part of the circuit here and the amplifier consists of the two resistors that I've now combined into a parallel parallel resistor this is actually the 30 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the 130 kilo ohm resistor here is the transistor made up of the base the emitter and the collector and then connected to the to the transistor at the collector is this 8 kilo ohm external resistor the output is applied across this 12 kilo ohm resistor. So I've got the three, the three parts, input, amplifier, output. The input signal is applied here. I define the voltage between those two points as my input. The output I can define as being between this point and, and ground at this point here. Now the definition for the gain of an amplifier is V out, output voltage, divided by input voltage. Now I'm going to do, well, we're going to see what value this actually is. What is the actual gain of this amplifier? And what we can look at, and actually what we're going to look at here is what we call the open circuit. I'm going to give this a subscript OC here. The open circuit voltage gain. So I'm going to consider it without the 12 kilo ohm load applied and then we'll see what happens when we apply the 12 kilo ohm load. So what is my output voltage? Well the output voltage without that 12 kilo ohm load applied is the voltage across this 8 kilo ohm resistor. The current through this 8 kilo ohm resistor is IC and IC is beta times IB. So the voltage across this 8 kilo ohm resistor is going to be 8000 times IC. And you'll note that I've defined my current as going in this direction, but yet I've defined my voltage as being more positive on this side than on this side. So that means that my output voltage will actually be negative, negative 8000 over IC. Now on the input side, the input voltage is the voltage between ground and this point here. But let's look over on over here. Electrically speaking, this point all along the top is the same. So the input voltage is also the voltage between this point and this point. And the current that's going through through this resistor is IE. So the voltage across this resistor, the voltage between these two points, is going to be 20.36 times IE. We can make the approximation that IC and IE are equal can be off by a small factor but because beta is also maybe off by a small factors and variation in the transistor we're just going to cancel these assume they're equal and so my voltage gain is simply negative 8000 over 20.36 which is negative 393 now what does that negative mean well it simply means that the input and output are 180 degrees out of phase with each other so when we usually talk about sinusoidal signals when the input is at its positive peak, the output will be at its negative peak. The next thing to figure out in this AC analysis is what is the input impedance. And the input impedance is the impedance seen looking from this point in. So what we see here is that we have a 24.4 kilo ohm resistor in parallel to whatever input impedance there is here at the transistor. So let's call this Z in Q to designate the input impedance seen looking into the transistor. 
So the overall input impedance is going to be this 24.4 kilo ohm resistor, the external re external resistors in parallel to the input impedance seen looking into the transistor. So this is the next thing that we need to figure out. The definition for input impedance is going to be the voltage applied at the input, which you can see is V in. It's the same. It's the same voltage as V in. So we're looking at this point, which is which is the, the our V in voltage, uh, or this point with respect to ground, divided by the current that's going into the input. Well, the current into the input here is the base current. So if we're looking back to back to our calculation for the for the um, voltage gain our input voltage was 20.36 times IE while our our input current it's the current it's the base current so it's just IB the current going into the base is the base current obviously well we know to in order to calculate a number here we actually know the the relationship between the emitter current and the base current the emitter current, we can substitute that with beta plus 1 times IB. All divided by IB, these base currents cancel out, and we get an input impedance that's going to be 20.36 times beta plus 1. And our beta was 150. So our input impedance works out to 3,054 ohms. Now this is the input impedance seen looking into the transistor, so this is in parallel with, with the 24.4 kilo ohms. So the overall input impedance is this 24.4 kilo ohms in parallel with 3,054 ohms. And that works out to 2.714 kilo ohms. The last thing to figure out is the output impedance, and that's the impedance seen from the output looking back into the circuit. Now when we're, when we're doing this analysis for figuring out the output impedance, we see we've got this 8 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with what's looking into the transistor, but as we're doing this analysis what we need to do is replace this current source with an open. So what we have is 8 kilo ohms in parallel with an open circuit, essentially infinite impedance, we find that the output impedance is simply equal to RC, which in this case is 8 kilo ohms. So now we have our three parameters for this amplifier in an open circuit configuration. So we can now redraw this as just a general amplifier circuit element that has some amount of input impedance that the input is applied to. In this case we have the 2.714 kilo ohms as well as this voltage source connected to an output impedance. And here is my output voltage. And that's output impedance is 8 kilo ohms. And this, this voltage source at the output is equal to negative 393 times V in. So with this general amplifier configuration, I can connect an input over here, and I can connect an output over here, and I can figure out what the overall effect on the input signal is going to be. You know, what kind of output signal am I going to get? The input that I had originally connected was this 10 millivolts. Let's call it 10 millivolt peak signal connected to a 600 ohm, well it has a 600 ohm output impedance. And the output is connected to a 12 kilo ohm load. Let's see what kind of output signal we get in this, in this circuit. So we have a 10 millivolt signal applied at the input, and that 10 millivolt is going to be divided between the 600 ohm 
output impedance of the source and the 2.7 kilo ohm input impedance of my amplifier. So that will be the voltage applied at the input. That's going to be multiplied by 393 and it's negative to in indicate that it's an inverting amplifier. And then that voltage coming from this, this source here is going to be split between the 8 kilo ohm output impedance and the 12 kilo ohm load. So once again, to, to sum up, here's the reduction due to the input impedance. This is the gain of the circuit, and this is the effect that the output impedance has on the signal. And the resulting output signal will be a 1.93 volt peak signal. And the negative indicates that it's 180 degrees out of phase with the input signal. Hopefully this video has helped you figure out how to do the AC analysis of a common emitter amplifier circuit. There's a couple of other configurations for BJT amplifiers, so check out my videos on those configurations. And I'll see you in the next video.